Good evening, colleagues. Thank you for your time today and for joining uh, my keynote session. My name is uh, Stephen Ozibo, and I am the Senior Director of Emerging Economies at ARM. Today, I'll be speaking about the fourth industrial revolution and the era of specialized and confidential compute. I want to kick off by saying a huge thanks to Dr. Happy Sitole and the Conference Planning Committee for their invitation to the conference and certainly uh, express my regards and uh, greetings to our governmental, non-governmental, uh, research, academia, and student uh, audiences here today. I hope that this talk and uh, the rest of the conference will spark uh, the much uh, needed innovation that you need for your continued research in the area. Um, today, I wanna take time to introduce Arm, uh, talk about our work, talk, to, talk about our partnership model and use cases. I certainly want to give an overview towards the confidential compute architecture, as we have uh, recently introduced to the ARM V9 instruction sets. And certainly from a, a product standpoint, I want to talk about the cloud to edge infrastructure that we have with ARM Neoverse. Um, I want to close out by uh, looking at the African opportunity um, and uh, speak towards the fourth industrial revolution edge AI and IoT use cases as we have observed them uh, within key industry verticals in Africa. Um, a little bit about ARM, for those of you who know about ARM, um, thank you for you know, your continued interest. <laughs> for those of you who don't, I wanna give you a quick overview. Um, ARM is a leader, the global leader, of course, in the development of licensable compute technology. We are in the semiconductor IP business and uh, uh, since inception, we have over 530 licensees cut across industry leaders, high growth startups, uh, chip companies, and of course, OEMs. Um, to date, um, ARM has shipped over 190 billion chips around the world. And in 2020 alone, uh, we had, you know, uh, 25 billion, over 25 billion uh, ARM-based chips shipped all around the world. Um, it goes without saying that uh, right around 70% of the world's population uses some form of ARM processor technologies across devices from endpoint mobile devices, you know, home-based uh, uh, mobile solutions, and even to um, data center, cloud, and uh, hyperscale, uh, high-performance computing solutions. Um, our partnership model is uh, rather simple. Um, ARM develops technology that is licensed to semiconductor companies. And uh, in return, we receive an upfront licensing fee and a royalty on every chip that contains our, our technology. Of course, between our semiconductor partners and our OEM partners, the licensing fee and the per chip royalty that uh, we receive um, really creates uh, this, the cycle of business that is uh, our continuous partnership model. Uh, from inception till now, of course, uh, over the last 30 plus years, we've gone from a small startup that was a joint venture between Acon Computers, Apple and VLSI Technologies, to now um, you know, a globally known uh, semiconductor IP company that is in all electronic devices around the world. We pride ourselves by being everywhere, everywhere that compute happens. And uh, with over 190 billion uh, chips to date, we are in devices from your simple smartphones, uh, data centers, high performance computing environments, uh, hyper, hyperscale environments, of course. And, um, you know, even in devices like tools, robots, um, basic uh, consumer devices, in a way where, um, you know, for every single point in the world, we're sure that there's an ARM device somewhere. Our model is really about enabling ubiquitous uh, compute. Uh, it's beginning, of course, with mobile compute. The ARM Total Compute uh, Solution offers a very holistic and solution-focused strategy towards um, system-on-chip design. And when we think about our mobile, um, companies and uh, networks, we have really grown um, into empowering the world's developers with much more performance and security towards designing and uh, 
building sophisticated and cost-effective solutions across multiple compute platforms. ARM is increasingly the architecture of choice for IoT, uh, where even for companies like Raspberry Pi, to date, there are over 37 million ARM-based Raspberry Pi devices that have been shipped. We are the, uh, the go-to provider of choice for rich embedded devices where 70% of the world's embedded devices are, uh, occupy some form of ARM-based SOC. And then when you even look at wearables, the wearables market is such that 90% of wearables are currently powered by some ARM-based SOC. Um, for, of course, next generation infrastructure, looking at cloud to edge, ARM is uh, the technology solution of choice for cloud providers, where we are showing um, data that is remarkably improving performance and lowering power consumptions across leading cloud providers like AWS. From an HPC standpoint, of course, the Fugaku, the number one supercomputer on the world, is, um, is, is running on ARM. And when we look at 5G carrier infrastructure and all of the open standards and RAN-based initiatives, ARM is now the preferred architecture for 5G core networks and for telco operators and vendors around the world. Certainly, um, as I speak more towards cloud native experiences uh, later on in the, uh, in the talk, we find that for infrastructure and IoT edge solutions, we have our Project Cassini, which is an interesting solution uh, for which I can share more documentation indeed uh, after uh, this presentation. And when we broaden out to um, you know, platforms for smarter, safer, connected cities, connected vehicles, um, you know, connected infrastructure, ARM is really driving the digital transformation of mobility with, uh, with a focus on safety, uh, scalability and uh, and collaboration. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, with five G, not only are we enabling you know cloud ran and enabling open standards, we are the choice for sustainability and um, a more sustainable planet. As five uh, G growth uh, sees a lot of energy consumption around the world, and certainly the need to lower carbon footprint and scale compute performance with uh, high speed bandwidth and uh, low latency requirements. The building blocks that we have um, in our ecosystem uh, stretch from cloud data center providers, uh, core network providers, and even down to radio access network providers. And we are proud to have uh, the world's leading hyperscaler um, as, uh, service providers, and even down to uh, some of the most interesting edge cloud, uh, telco edge cloud and 5G uh, infrastructure providers all running on ARM. Uh, key to all of this, of course, is security. Um, ARM's trust zone security system uh, from an enterprise security standpoint, even looking down at uh, content protection across uh, devices like OTT and uh, set-up boxes, authentication devices uh, that lead all the way to uh, cybersecurity efficiencies, and even the uh, platform security architecture uh, which was co-founded by ARM, allows us to analyze uh, different threats towards defining specific security requirements and definitely uh, architect the security that's uh, based on these requirements, implementing some of the processes that combine hardware and firmware using open source implementations, and then certainly uh, certifying a lot of these products according to our PSA standards uh, through programs like, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Project Cassini. For the V9 architecture, uh, we are definitely introducing new features that are designed to deliver confidential computing. And the ARM confidential compute architecture builds on the foundation of Trust Zone by enabling um, you know, certain informations to be fully separated from uh, what will be the operating system applications. Confidential compute is important for client devices and in the cloud that can also mean protecting physical CPUs as well as virtualized uh, processors that are running next to uh, third party code. A modern computing, of course, uh, oh, excuse me here, modern computing, of course, is conducted in a wide range of environments, uh, including those that are not directly controlled by data owners. 
And what this does, it, it opens up a wider range of threats uh, to the confidentiality and integrity of that data. And that's why we have put together a confidential compute under V9 to really perform computation in environments that are trusted to be secured against two major factors, observation and modification of your data by external uh, parties. Of course, the full confidentiality in this case requires not just a combination of hardware and software architectures, but an understanding of what it takes to secure the execution environments. And these environments, of course, um, uh, range from uh, basic you know, end devices like mobile phones, of course, end node devices like what could seem like mobility, uh, connected cars, connected cities and, uh, and infrastructure, and then all the way to, to the cloud. Um, of course, we're not alone on this journey, right? There is a, a huge proliferation of confidential compute solutions around the world with Red Hat, uh, Microsoft, uh, Google, AWS, Baidu, and uh, Apache, all having uh, software solutions uh, towards uh, looking at uh, improving confidential compute uh, as a measure of security. And so Alam is certainly a premier member along with uh, some of our good friends here We're at the Confidential Compute Consortium uh, within the Linux Foundation. And we hope to continue to provide our intelligence uh, support and processes towards uh, optimizing security within the architecture. Um, there are a lot of industry drivers um, really driving uh, confidential compute in the world, uh, part of which is uh, the increased regulation across the use of private data um, with GDPR and HIPAA um, being uh, key attributes to that. Certainly because of the use of sensitive personal data and ambient compute, it's, uh, it's important uh, that security is prioritized. And then third and not least is uh, the ever-growing need for uh, enterprises, governments, institutions to move from sensitive on-prem workloads and uh, uh, directly move to the cloud. Of course, from an isolation standpoint between workloads, we're looking at systems, architectures, and um, uh, platforms that have a combination of uh, you know, mobile, uh, social media, enterprise apps, fitness apps, your phone could have, you know, it could be a work phone that has a, a variety of enterprise apps, email, uh, general web browsers, to even uh, your car where there is uh, a mixture of OEM apps, uh, autom uh, autonomous capabilities and the need for content protection between your personal information and the car and uh, the other apps running around it. From a wearable standpoint, of course, um, we're all now in the era of you know, health and fitness and uh, using connected technologies for our homes, uh, for our businesses, for certain features in our, in our lives, that it's now important to isolate and understand um, the isolation of, of workloads. And as we move towards uh, confidential compute within V9, it's very important to understand how it works. You know, from an ARM perspective, confidential compute really looks at protecting data in use, you know, while it's in memory and while it's being processed by performing computation in a hardware-based secure environment and using, uh, you know, our unique technologies to shield portions of code and data from access and modification, even when it's coming from a privileged software. Of course, we have uh, built over time, you know, um, you know, platforms like Trust Zones, which isolate from uh, host and hypervisor uh, situations and have specific tool chains and trusted OSs, but it's always been limited. Um, sometimes within the virtualization environment, you know, we've been having limitations across uh, available memory and isolation of primary host uh, operating systems. And certainly from, uh, you know, from an SAL2, we've had um, complementary improvements on our basic virtualization technologies and the uh, modularity and isolation within Trust Zone. The confidential compute uh, architecture, however, uh, goes all above all of that and isolates from host OS uh, hypervisor and Trust Zone uh, environments and really creates uh, more protection uh, and security across the entire ecosystem. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Right. I want to also introduce uh, this conversation around uh, the realm world, which is what the uh, you know a confidential compute is actually uh, built around, and uh, the realm world in itself, uh, from a management extension standpoint, is really um, the hardware architecture for realms to run with an extension to remove the need for a dedicated memory to trust zone. And from an ARM standpoint, of course, we're looking at um, how we can have memory move dynamically between worlds and how we can create architectural, new architectural features like the realm management extension that really isolates realms and provides system-wide security analysis in a simplified way. And what are those realms? I mean, realms are supported at uh, the virtual machine level. You know, they're really protected virtual machines that allows the um, hypervisor to manage certain types of resources, but without having uh, full access to those resources, right? And we want to be able to do that uh, through isolation by uh, making sure that access results in, in certain types of faults. And then of course, uh, by encryption to make sure that um, we can't have, uh, we can have protection against reboot attacks. Um, from a protection, uh, from a device protection standpoint, of course, uh, the realms uh, covers uh, major aspects of uh, direct memory access and, and processors within uh, devices. The architecture in summary um, speaks to four uh, different requirements and certainly satisfies them in ways where when we're looking at secure extension uh, capabilities, of course, the RME um, introduces realms and new isolations, uh, isolation boundaries, so that the content cannot be accessed by other realms. Uh, from a scale standpoint, of course, uh, we're making sure that there should be no specific limits on resources in this environment and available memory is trans, you know, very much dynamically moved uh, between realms and uh, other processes. Of course, there's a standard ABI to manage uh, these realms and the hardware architecture um, and standard ABI specifications uh, do support attestation for these realms. And what is, I mean, what does it take to be attestable? Uh, attestation is really about code that runs uh, inside of uh, the realm and uh, correctly, correctly implements uh, the RME. Um, I mentioned that we'll be talking a bit around Neoverse uh, to look at cloud to edge infrastructure foundations. Um, as we prioritize security uh, through CCA, of course, uh, the ARM product line um, introduces all of this across uh, the entire infrastructure from rich endpoints, of course, with small devices, small meters, to IoT gateways that are, you know, 10 to 100 plus core, cores per server, all the way to edge and 5G infrastructure where cores and racks uh, begin to grow considerably. And then to, of course, cloud data center and HPC solutions where um, we're looking at maximum compute and a need for a backward compatibility with uh, applications uh, across the ecosystem. Of course, in all of this, uh, you know, there's a fifth wave of computing for which 4IR sits. As Africa and the rest of the world embrace the new industrial revolution, we do still continue to have concerns around, you know, bandwidth availability. Um, of course, universal, uh, you know, constraints around power requirements for adoption, uh, latency requirements in terms of communication. There's the autonomy of engineering systems and processes. Um, of course, a key to all of this, and my highlight for the purpose of this talk being security and privacy. And then finally, uh, delivering economic value across, uh, across the ecosystem. ARM's architecture, our architecture for total compute, you know, starts off with our, our Codex A devices that are designed for high level operating systems, uh, mobility and uh, endpoint uh, solutions. Of course, our Cortex-R systems um, are designed for, you know, high performance, hard real-time uh, applications um, in terms of uh, some of the work we have with automotive, IoT, telematics uh, type technologies. And then, of course, uh, we have the Cortex-M, which is uh, our 
microcontroller and discrete processing technologies, embedded systems technologies. The Neoverse is where you know the cloud infrastructure and uh, larger compute requirements, superior performance, high core count systems, and scalable system, hyperscalable systems live. The security requirements for CCA cut across all of these, of course. And uh, as I mentioned before, while in some cases we're looking at high latency um, experiences with high performance and efficiency, uh, where on the other end of the spectrum, we're looking at um, higher capacity compute requirements, of course. And ARM remains, we remain the architecture of choice uh, for this entire uh, spectrum of uh, infrastructure opportunities. And we also um, offer flexible options towards promoting um, heterogeneous uh, silicon solutions, depending on which part of the spectrum that you are in. Uh, the next generation, as I mentioned, um, we continue to enable high performance and scalable solutions for cloud providers, um, AWS Graviton being one, um, high performance computing environments, Fugaku, of course, as I mentioned, 5G infrastructure, IoT, all of these solutions enable all of our partners to really innovate and design across a diverse set of solutions that solve complex compute challenges. And uh, because of the robust ARM hardware and software ecosystems, um, from the best design tools to the most advanced processor nodes, uh, we are able to come together uh, with our ecosystem and offer very unique solutions within um, the growing environment for fourth, uh, for 4IR, of course, within the developed and developing worlds. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of cloud platform partners are already embracing ARM-based servers, uh, AWS Graviton being one and Ampere being another. Neoverse is being foundational now uh, to a variety of companies from Microsoft to Equinix to Tencent to, to Oracle. And uh, our ability to continue to see these use cases really excites us as to what the future of uh, compute would look like. I wanna take some time to talk through um, a use case here for a company that I am uh, really, really um, uh, admire, I'm a big admirer of. Uh, Cloudflare, of course, has been deploying hyper-efficient ARM-based servers now for a few years. If you didn't know Cloudflare, uh, they are a web infrastructure and security company that provide content delivery networks and um, uh, you know denial of services, uh, mitigation services from a security standpoint. And uh, they first deployed their ARM-based servers in uh, July of 2021. And um, you know, the data from them shows that um, the newest ARM Neoverse-based CPUs are processing an incredible 57% more internet requests per watt. That's a remarkable number. And because of ARM, uh, Cloudflare can now securely process over 10 times as many internet requests for every watt of power consumed, um, you know, really putting uh, a shining light on what we are doing uh, for delivering more performance per watt than um, any of our closest uh, competitors. And as I mentioned earlier, it's critical for me to speak towards some of the use cases that we're seeing across Africa. And uh, in edge AI and IoT, we want to be able to shine light on the industry verticals that are important to us and some of the inter industry verticals that'll be driving growth within your regions and uh, within the entire continent. Um, the Africa opportunity for us uh, is certainly uh, us paying attention to the infrastructure improvements that are driving opportunities across the continent in uh, general connectivity and data management solutions. Um, even in South Africa, we've seen um, great, great improvements in uh, fiber optic technology, the undersea cables being terminated. I mean, for what it's worth, point of presence uh, capabilities and the growth of HPC and security through uh, facilities like the CHPC. There's a lot of uh, vertical automation that's happening and energy management and latency needs are becoming increasingly uh, viable for investment and adoption from private equity companies uh, to governments uh, looking for 
uh, peculiar solutions that will guide data sovereignty and national interests. And for all of this to come together on the application layer, of course, there's a need for smarter, safer, and more interoperable applications fundamental to uh, local technology solutions. And with artificial intelligence and machine learning all bundled together within the new security frameworks of the CCA, we are very confident that um, our time on the continent, uh, you know, learning and uh, fraternizing with a lot of you will give us the insights that we need from a research standpoint and allow us to offer critical solutions uh, to what will be uh, the platform technologies of the African future. In many instances, you know, agriculture is seen as a, a key driver of many African economies. Um, we are confident that uh, within the 4 hour use case, as there continues to be um, inflection points and convergence points with ag tech, um, some of our you know, end users can now continue to zero in on using IoT applications to drive precision agriculture and increase the quality, quantity, and sustainability of uh, their agricultural production. I mean, all of this drives incredible cost effectiveness that will effectively yield um, economic outcomes. And we kind of hope that uh, working with partners like some of you in the audience, uh, we can drive this on a very, very industry specific level. Um, in the transportation sector, of course, as I mentioned before, arms automotive business has seen us uh, look at uh, the security functions and the compute functions, the latency functions, the communication functions towards amplifying intelligent transport systems and supporting key infrastructure requirements for not just smart transportation technologies, but for vehicle telematics and smart logistics. Uh, from South Africa to Namibia to Nairobi to Tunisia. I mean, we have uh, African goods moving from point to point and our ability to then look at the connection between an end node on a vehicle to a high performance complete, uh, compute uh, data analytics environment in the cloud to look at um, you know, computational RFID and scanning whether or not a piece of equipment or some productions from the South African mine is getting to its final end user. These are all um, use cases for telematics and smart transportation that all come with a fundamental requirement around security. How can we ensure that the confidential compute architecture that we speak about really allows for some of these intelligent transport systems to deliver in a very secure manner? Of course, from a manufacturing standpoint, um, you know, system vulnerabilities are what they are. And we continue to hope that um, our technologies and our partner ecosystems uh, within the African um, uh, economies that we plan to uh, participate in will provide real-time analytics and enabling support functions really related to confidentiality, interconnectivity, and security. I mean, this cannot be overemphasized uh, within the larger scheme of Africa's growth in, uh, in looking at uh, trade zones and really localized manufacturing zones, but it's also just as critical in looking at aspects of sovereignty and uh, you know, data localization for many of these manufacturing environments. Also for the environments where we're introducing robotics, um, introducing supply chain management, introducing certain aspects of quality assurance and quality control, the security of these systems and the isolation and control that comes as a benefit of a confidential compute, uh, the, our, our confidential compute architecture can certainly not be overemphasized. I mean, what can I say about energy management, right? Internally and externally, when we look at up and, when we look up and down the food chain as to what's possible, uh, remote energy management, um, whether it's on distributed energy grids uh, for smart grids with edge AI devices, or even internal um, energy envelopes and power envelopes within data centers and high performance compute environments, we want to ensure that um, you know, we continue to support these ecosystems with secure and intelligent edge AI devices that are interoperable, 
and can provide real-time analytics and overall sustainability, uh, again, fundamentally um, within a very secure way. With CCA, of course, um, the, the whole idea is to change the traditional trust relationship between applications and the supervisor but by, by removing that need for access to resources while retaining the right to manage them. I mean, the energy grid and their dependence now on uh, being smart and smart grid infrastructure also opens up all measure of vulnerabilities as to how you know, security breaches within a national, regional, or even municipal energy grid uh, could be detrimental to uh, a company's or country's uh, information and power architecture. Of course, we cannot go wrong with speaking about elements of uh, cybersecurity around all of this, where you know the the changing narrative around ransomware, the changing narratives around um, energy isolation as a part of um, system arbitrage. And even in some cases, um, cyber warfare, we have to be uh, quite cognizant of what this particular vertical can do within um, the development of our economies across the African continent. Um, as I mentioned, of course, we are uh, looking at our ecosystems and networks to become a part of the backbone of the work that we'll be doing. Um, through not just the introduction of the V9 architecture and conversations around security applications with confidential compute, but also our ability to continue to educate uh, the African ecosystem on many of the ways that arms uh, technology platforms and ecosystem uh, can really drive um, the ICT industries, uh, the high performance compute industries, uh, the general sec security frameworks, and what could be uh, the information uh, backbone of many of our economies. ARM continues to be uh, the leader, the global leader in ultra low cost, ultra low power uh, devices from edge AI all the way to the hyperscale. Um, as I mentioned through this talk, um, we will continue to uh, provide through the V9 architecture and beyond uh, with uh, platforms like uh, confidential compute, industry leading security frameworks, uh, standards and applications. And certainly um, for, the, for the purpose of this community of listeners and what will be a greater audience of folks, we want to be sure that um, the innovation and intelligence within low latency and mission critical applications continue to be met uh, through our products and, um, and our services. Um, the, the, the launch of V9, um, the architecture in itself, confidential compute, really signals a new era for ARM um, within what I wanna call a pervasive platform for driving secure AI-driven uh, computing that will enable our ecosystem of more than 1,000 partners well into you know, the next decade. Arm V9 will continue to be at the forefront of the next 300 billion ARM-based chips, really driven by the demand for specialized, secure, and high-performance uh, processing built on the economics, uh, the design freedom, and the accessibility of uh, general-purpose compute. For the purpose of this talk, um, as I said, I wanted to highlight the architecture highlight some of the use cases, definitely narrow into some of the sectors that we see that could drive um, Africa's engagement within the fourth industrial revolution, and then work out uh, various ways that uh, the architecture could be implemented by some of you within your research environments in uh, looking at uh, various innovations, within the larger industry environments in looking at uh, various uh, solutions and even for our governmental partners in the room within this general policy environment in ensuring that uh, the systems, the processes and the applications of the future are built out securely. I want to definitely thank you for your time. Um, as I mentioned, a lot of the tech specs and requirements um, across V9, across CCA, across Neoverse um, will be provided uh, for participants who are as interested 
on demand. And um, and so, you know, feel free to reach out uh, through the um, the uh, conference uh, organizers on any information that you might need in that regard. And certainly, I want to take time to thank um, you know the conference organizers for this remarkable opportunity of presenting to you today and uh, thank uh, our esteemed audience of researchers, governmental partners, and students who are here today. I wanna to close out by pointing out that um, our engagement within the African ecosystem is definitely uh, one where we want to uh, start off in South Africa and um, build out what would be a replicable series of relationships by bringing in the ARM ecosystem supporting universities and supporting research institutions, supporting startups and supporting developer um, communities, and certainly supporting industry in uh, looking at ways and means that we can continue to uh, guide uh, narratives and roadmaps uh, with the ARM ecosystem. Uh, to this end, um, we are in uh, roundup talks towards uh, having uh, a partnership presence uh, in East London, uh, in the Eastern Cape, around which we will have uh, an arm hub and a lab uh, to allow us uh, really localize a lot of what you've heard from my talk today and uh, give us a touch point towards interacting with many of you, many of the universities, uh, many of the research institutions and the governmental partners. Uh, please uh, look out for this um, and many more in what will be a series of announcements coming through the CHPC and the CSIR. Um, our relationship and partnership with the CHPC and CSIR is fundamental to a lot of the uh, training and licensing technologies towards increasing the adoption of RMIP in the region. We want to be able to empower uh, young learners from K-12 all the way to university in really adopting uh, RMIP and solutions, train them, use educational curriculum, to improve their knowledge of these technologies. We certainly want to see more South African startups building on ARM. We want to ensure that um, platforms like CCA become uh, really standards towards um, securing uh, IoT, telematics, uh, V2X, and uh, all manner of um, uh, technical outputs of the future. And then from a, from a knowledge sharing and uh, learning standpoint, we want to introduce uh, to the university communities a lot of our ARM training through ARM education and ARM research partnership opportunities uh, to allow for many of the researchers, many of my co-presenters, many of the co-panelists to really speak to uh, my colleagues as to how to um, improve uh, some of their learnings uh, built on the back of uh, the ARM technology platform. And then finally, of course, we want to continue to interface with our governmental partners in ensuring that we can support um, forward thinking policies around national security, information security, uh, data sovereignty technologies, and uh, really localizing all the needs to protect and uh, ensure that uh, cyber security threats and all manner of information security threats are not only isolated, but managed uh, towards uh, a sustainable and uh, secure future. I, I want to thank you all again for your time. I certainly um, you know, look forward to meeting you in person at some point in the near future. Uh, given everything that's going on in the world, I want to implore you to, to be safe, um, to uh, really adhere to um, aspects of our collective safety and our humanity. Um, and uh, given everything going on with the virus, I hope that your families and your wards uh, remain safe and healthy. Uh, thank you very much for your time. And, uh, you know, I look forward to uh, questions, uh, concerns, indications of interests, and any other partnership considerations that you may have uh, down the line. Thank you again for your time and have a good evening. <laughs>